This is a list of life's 25 American classics everyone should read at least once. I've read four, so I guess I have some work to do. How many of these have you read? Personally, I believe Tom Sawyer, The Red Badge of Courage, and Friday Night Lights ought to be included here, but that's just me. We're going to have a brief history lesson on the development of books, so grab some popcorn. Starting in the ancient world. Papyrus was used in Egypt as early as 2400 BCE. Next came parchment, which was treated animal skin. This replaced papyrus in Europe because it was more durable. And then came Codex, which was made of bound materials by the Romans in the 4th century. The first postmodern book was made using Codex. Eventually, we came to the development of manuscript culture. At this time, books were painstakingly lettered, decorated, and bound by hand. Imagine how much fun that was. As with anything, business people recognized that audiences wanted to read books, so, the, so we came to the entrepreneurial stage of the evolution of books and the illuminated manuscripts. These used decorative, colorful designs and illustrations, and as the most literate of the time were the clergy, they were made for churches or wealthy clients. They say necessity is the mother of invention. Well, remember I said books were lettered by hand. That, obviously, was a slow, arduous process. So enter block printing and movable type. This was developed by Chinese printers and enabled multiple copies to be printed and bound. Movable type was invented in China around 1000. It made creating block pages faster. New developments were later developed independently in Europe in the 1400s. One innovation that really helped bring on the Enlightenment was, as books became more and more accessible was the Gutenberg printing press. This was invented by Johannes Gutenberg. It is an inestimable it has an inestimable let me try that again. It has an inestimable influence on Western culture because it helped make books cheaper and thus permitted information and knowledge to spread outside local jurisdictions. Because the less affluent were now gaining access to information, it also permitted individuals to challenge traditional wisdom and customs because they could now read the words for themselves. The birth of publishing in the United States came in 1640 when Stephen Day published the first colonial book, The Whole Book of Psalms. Another prominent figure of the time who was constantly popping up, Benjamin Franklin, imported and reprinted novels in his day. The first paperback books came to the U.S. in the 1830s, and the first dime novels, sometimes identified as pulp fiction because of the cheap machine-made pulp paper they were printed on, arrived in 1860. In the 1880s, the first linotype machines were invented, and the steam-powered and high-speed rotary presses were developed, further expanding the publishing of books. And in the early 1900s, we saw the development of offset lithography, which greatly reduced the cost of color and illustrations, and further accelerated book production. Early prestigious publishing houses tried to identify and produce the works of good writers. Many of the oldest publishing houses survive now, but today they survive as part of larger conglomerates. Demand for books grew between 1880 and 1920 with the rise of the industrialized urban culture. As folks moved from the farms to the cities, they became more aware and more cultured. Thus, book publishing grew. The book industry also helped European immigrants assimilate into American culture and language. Remember, books were cheap, so immigrants who were learning the language had easy access. The two world wars and the Great Depression caused a decline in book sales from 1910 through the 1950s, but literature has staying power and the book industry bounced back after World War II. Books come in all shapes and sizes and for many different purposes. Trade books are those that are for general readers and that are sold at commercial retail. They include things like adult, fi uh, adult trade, fiction, nonfiction, and biographies, books on hobbies and travel and the like, juvenile trade such as Dr. Seuss and Harry Potter, and comics and graphic novels. Professional books are those aimed at specific target audiences, including law, business, medical, and technical or scientific books. Of course, textbooks that you all know and love, including elementary through high school, L high texts, college texts, and vocational texts. And then there are the mass market paperbacks, which are sold on racks in drugstores, supermarkets, and airports, and are the work of major blockbuster authors, like the writings of Stephen King, John Grisham, and Patricia Cornwell. They also include instant books, which are turned out right after a major event. We also have religious titles, including the best-selling book of all time, the Bible, reference books, dictionaries, encyclopedias, atlases, almanacs, and professional or trade-specific references. And finally, there are university press books, which are non-profit scholarly works that are developed for, all, for small groups who are interested in intellectually specialized areas. Professors often try to get published in these or to even get book deals to produce. You can see here two charts covering the same topic, the estimated U.S. book revenue in both 2010 and 2013. 
I put both on here so you can see that there is not much difference in three years. The one on the right is more condensed, but you can see that the trade journals are obviously the most popular with higher education coming second. As with all other print media we've discussed, books have been influenced by television and film. Two major facets, how television can help authors sell books, and how books serve as ideas for television shows and movies. First, television helps sell books via promotion by talk show hosts such as Oprah Winfrey. Publicists seek these types of programs so they can raise awareness and, of course, sales. And, of course, books become the ideas for movies. Now, I know the movies are often loosely based off the book. If you've ever read the Lord of the Rings books and then watched the Lord of the Rings movies, you know they can deviate a lot. But shows like Game of Thrones on HBO and Dexter on Showtime and movies like Life of Pi by Jan Martell and J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series obviously are very popular. Have you ever had a long drive? Do you ever work out and need something to occupy your mind? Do you know someone who's visually impaired? Audiobooks, or books on tape, can be very nice. They generally feature authors or actors reading entire works or abridged versions. If you've never listened to one, check one out. They're quite entertaining. As with magazines, books also are now available on iPads and tablets. Project Gutenberg has accelerated the future of ebooks. Now more than 40,000 public domain books, those works whose intellectual property rights have expired, are free to download. These include books like Alice in Wonderland, Moby Dick, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and Ulysses. Now printed books are available on demand, which is reviving books that would otherwise go out of print. This helps bookstores avoid the inconvenience of carrying unsold books. At first, e-readers were big, bulky, and expensive. But, as with almost all technology, they became smaller, lighter, and more cost-effective. E-books are, are, are also the reimagining of what a book can be. Books now have embedded video, hyperlinks, and dynamic content. Publishers are also tailoring books to specific readers. Today, efforts are underway to save and preserve older books as well as to move them to digital platforms. 19th century books were printed on acid-based paper, which gradually deteriorates. Libraries developed preservation techniques in the 1970s. One advancement that has aided in preservation is the development of acid-free paper in the early 1990s. At that time, libraries began photocopying pages onto the paper and stored the originals. Digital imaging is the latest in book preservation. The Google Books is the most extensive digita digitization project and began in 2004. It features partnerships with the New York Public Library and about 20 university research libraries to scan millions of books and make them available online. Authors Guild and Association of American Publishers initially sued Google for digitizing copyrighted books without permission. However, Google Books won its case by arguing that displaying limited portions of books was legal under fair use rules. One big hot topic in our land of freedom of speech in the press is censorship. Censorship is imposed by various rulers and groups to maintain authority. It has often prevented people from learning about the rituals and moral standards of other cultures. The American Library Association compiles a list of the most challenged books every year. A book challenge is a formal complaint for the removal of a book from a library. Common reasons for challenges historically have included sexually explicit passages or nudity, offensive language or racism, occult themes, violence, homosexual themes, and promotion of a religious viewpoint. Here you can see a breakdown of the reasons for challenges against American, li against American libraries from 2001 to 2010. These book bans are generally requested from school or public libraries. You can see that sexually explicit material and offensive language are the chief reasons for ban requests. On the right, you can see that classics are not immune to ban requests. A handful of major corporations dominate commercial publishing. These large companies can financially support smaller firms while allowing editorial ideas to remain independent. However, Amazon.com is offering a challenge to both large trade book publishers and independents. Both are struggling in the digital upheaval and dominance of Amazon.com. Here you can see a list of the top 10 book publishers from 2014, based upon revenue in the millions. Book publishing includes the editorial, production, and marketing areas. Editing includes acquisitions, development, and copy editing. Acquisition editors identify talent and handle subsidiary rights. Developmental editors handle feedback to authors and make suggestions for improvement. The copy editors attend to issues in writing or length. Production and design managers work on the look of the book and make decisions about type style, paper, cover design, and layout. Marketing concerns include the number of copies to print, how to reach potential readers, and cost for promotion and advertising. 
Here you can see how a book's revenue is divided. One would think the person who actually wrote the thing would get the lion's share of the revenue, right? Wrong. Whether in hardcover or when purchased online, the majority of the money goes elsewhere. Notice that when the book is actually published and sold in the bookstore, half of the revenue goes to the bookstore. But when it is purchased online, the publisher gets half the revenue. Is it any wonder publishers are pushing more ebooks? Speaking of booksellers, brick and mortar stores include the book superstores like Barnes and Noble and Borders, the independent bookstores, big discount retailers like Walmart, especially retailers like Anthropology. Book clubs also are sellers. They originally helped the industry when local stores were rare. And there is mail order, which was pioneered in the 1950s by magazine publishers. They sell special sets of books, one book at a time, and they are primarily used by trade, professional, and university press publishers today. For you, the consumer, the selling of books online provides a great advantage. Naturally, there is the convenience, but as you saw from the earlier slide, they are less expensive and you have access to less popular titles. Also, as we noted earlier, the beast of the online booksellers, Amazon.com, has made it hard on publishers. Its biggest rivals are Apple's iBookstore and Google Play, two other rising giants. One more chart for you. You can see here, while Amazon is the monster in online bookselling, its device, the Kindle, is dwarfed by the Apple iPad. In fact, the iPad owns twice the market share of all other devices combined. Some closing thoughts. Books have played an important role in spreading democracy and connecting people to new ideas. Americans are reading more, and readers are more likely to perform volunteer and charity work. And while technology has had an impact, books and reading have survived the challenge of digital culture. So the next time you need something to do, grab a book and expand your horizons.